Today we are talking with the DAR, that's the Dallas Area Association of Realtors, Realtor of the Year and the recipient of the Jeanette Newton Community Leadership Award winner and a OG, an original gangsta here at Redwood. We've been working together uh, since, uh, since 17 years. I was trying to think of something witty to describe that. Since, uh, since a lot of um, moderately old people right now were, were, were very young when we first started working together. That's right, we were just babies. Thanks yeah. for having me. No, no, it's so, I'm, I'm just ecstatic for everybody to get to, to learn more about Don Tallis. So I remember when you joined, it's been 17 years and we were, you were in that, that first crop of agents that I felt like signified that we had really made it. We had just gone from an independent Redwood Realty to Century 21 Redwood Realty. And we really started exploding in Loudoun County and you were a huge part of that. Here is what I remember. So when I first started out, I was with a pretty heavy hitting team with a different brokerage. I was a buyer's agent for them. And I remember every Tuesday meeting that we had, half of that meeting was talking about how we're got to, well, we have to beat the boys. You guys were the boys. You guys were just the Redwood boys back then. And so she was like, we need to keep an eye on them. We need to make sure that we're doing what they're doing. And it was almost like, an obsession <laughs> to do it. That's and great. I was like, yeah, we do need to keep an eye yes. on them. And then mm -hmm. when we ended up departing, we ended mm -hmm. up joining Redwood. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it was it was vice versa. It was a two-way street. We were being inspired by the competition and, and yeah. we were the the young, hungry startup that just wanted to, to, to make a, a name for ourselves. And I remember I'd have bad days and I'd open up the paper and be like, we've sold 80 houses this year. You know, and I'm working with like two leads and I just want to go crawl under a rock and die. And so um, it's it's great. I'd never uh, heard that story from, from that angle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it definitely was. But I think with Redwood and the reason, you know, I'm part of the OGs and have stayed with Redwood for so long is that we're constantly pivoting. We're constantly transforming. We're constantly um, figuring out like what the next avenue is. You guys give us the tools, the training, the accountability, the camaraderie, the community, um, and all the support that we need on every single level, whether, whether it's IT, whether it's social media, um, you know, whether it's, you know, our new agent training in the Ascend program, you know, there is nothing that, um, you guys don't support us on on every single level. Well, thank you. Yeah. And so, from a continuity perspective, because you know a lot of your colleagues in the in the industry, they they tend to jump every couple of years. You know, they move from broker to brokers. Do you feel like the continuity of being with the same firm has has helped in your career? I absolutely do. I think that when you look at the grand scheme of things, and to be very open and honest. I very much do my due diligence to make sure I'm staying with the right firm, with the right brokerage every single year. I, if something new comes out, um, I'm finding out what it looks like, what the structure is, what type of support they give. I understand fully the support that I get from you guys. And that is something that I'm not giving up. And there, that is something that there is not another brokerage out there that's going to be able to um, to support that or to keep up with that. I mean, that means even more because it, it shows just like your friends that picked you as their agent, stuck yeah, with yeah. you as their agent. It, it's it, They're not just doing it because it's my friend Don. It's because we know Don's the best at what they do. Yeah. I mean, you could very easily be an agent out there that's just trying to um, trying to get by without any of the support. And there's just, you just can't compete. You can't compete with me. You can't compete with our brokerage. You just had a huge night in Loudoun County at the Dallas Area Association of Realtors uh, uh, Awards Night. You were named the DAR Realtor of the Year. And on, in addition to that, you won the Jeanette Newton Community Leadership Award. It was absolutely um, incredible. So with the Jeanette Newton Community Leadership Award, that is, so Jeanette Newton was CEO of DAR for over 25 years. And besides having 
your typical CEO, um, you know, duties on her plate. She was huge into um, philanthropic uh, ideas and things like that and bringing the community together. And that's what I absolutely loved about her is that everything was always about serving your community, not necessarily making a sale. And so I applied for the Circle of Excellence. And in order to apply for that, you had to... Um, be able to show that you had served on different um, committees, you had served within your brokerage, you volunteered, and it was it's all about community service and volunteering is what that is. And so, um, you know, I applied to be in, just in the circle of excellence, which could be any amount of people that met that criteria. And there were, um, I think there was eight of us that actually won for that circle of excellence and one person from there would win the overall Jeanette Newton Award. And um, so when they called my name for that award, I was like, I was just overwhelmed and moved. I cried. Um, it is nice in this industry when you are doing, besides selling homes, you're, you're doing the work in your community and you're bringing community together. And you realize that, that you know, that you're making a difference it's, it's huge. And to be recognized for that, like, you know, I don't volunteer and do everything that I do for, you know, I'm the chair of the community service, um, committee at DAR. I am an ambassador for Redwood Gives Back. I volunteer for Mobile Hope and Graffiti and Silk. Um, I assist them with all of their social media and doing all of that to be recognized for it is nice because we don't do it for the accolades. Yeah. We do it because, we serve a bigger purpose than just selling homes. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. So that was awesome. And then winning realtor of the year was even more of a surprise because in all of the years that they've had both of these awards, there has never been another agent who has won both. And so it was once I won the Jeanette Newton Award, yeah. I was just like, okay, I can okay. sit down for the night. Yeah. I can I can, have I can eat my drink. dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I can yeah. have a drink or whatever. And then um and then Ida Dennis, our president, called me up for the realtor of the air. And then the tears started flowing yeah. again because you're overwhelmed, you're moved, you're honored. Yeah. And and you have all of your colleagues that are out there who are just cheering you from you know, the sidelines. And so it was really awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, best well, night. It couldn't happen to a better person. So thank you. Congrats. Thanks. So that was, that's, that's really powerful. So you do the work because you, you care deeply about the community that you've been in for 40 years, but it also like, let's face it, people like working with local real estate agents who, and they like working with people who care about their community. So how do you, work your philanthropic, uh, you know, contributions of the community into your marketing? So I, I mean, I think for anybody who knows me and who follows me on social media, um, or who is a, an introduction or a referral does probably does their research online as to what it's about. When I go on my appointments, I don't typically say, you know, I talk a little bit about Redwood Gives Back and, and, you know, different things like that, but I don't make it a point to necessarily advertise it. I do make it a point to put it on social media is that, you know, this is what we've done today as part of our community service. Um, but I have always had a servant's heart. I have just since I was little, it was how can I help? And it's from my mom. My mom has just always raised me to, you know, if somebody needs something and you can help them, then that's what you do. You know, growing up and giving back to the community or volunteering for the church and things like that just came naturally to me. When I started having a family, my way of giving back was more or less through the boys school um, and just making the connections. Like the easiest thing for me to do is make a genuine connection with somebody doing something that is about serving, not about sales. Sales will come. But when 
you are serving your community, you don't have an agenda out there. There is no, there is zero pay in volunteering and the rewards will keep on coming. And it's not necessarily in the amount of, you know, I'm going to sell so many houses, but we're out there to be educators. We're out there to be advocates for our clients and for our community. And so that's my perspective. My motto is I serve, I don't sell. Yeah. But in return, I do sell. You do. And you're having a banging <laughs> year and you're having, um, I mean, you, you should feel so amazing for the, for your, your production over this last year. Cause yeah. you were up like 151% in a year where the market, you know, uh, the, the transactions, right. It's a great time to own real estate because yes. real estate prices are going up. It's just the transaction count is, is going down. So the transactions are off like 30%. You're up 151%. How, how did it all come together at the same time? You know, interestingly enough, going back to serving, um, during COVID, and this is, you know, something that kind of, you know, we at Redwood were constantly talking about checking on our clients, making sure that they're okay, checking on our community, making sure they're okay. So during COVID, I was calling every single one of my clients and what do you need? And if they needed toilet paper and hand sanitizer and whatever it is that they yeah. needed, you know, those Isn't were my pot yeah. pies. You know, it was, it was like things that they needed. It wasn't anything other than that, but it was just making sure that everybody was okay. And, you know, if they had loved ones that were sick or, you know, we needed to pray for them or whatever, it was, I hadn't been more in touch with my sphere over COVID. And I think, that, that probably last year was that transition yeah. of and then right before covid you you had invested a lot in in your personal brand right through you yeah. did some videos with with Aaliyah. did that like what impact did that have on on your on your business you know what i loved about that is that well i would say this getting out of my own way was and I, and I tried to do it for so long by myself. Um, and doing that allowed somebody else to kind of take the reins that I trusted to, to do the video, to do the marketing, to give me suggestions on content that wanted to be, you know, that, that people wanted to see and for me to recognize that. So it, again, it came back to people don't always want to say, hey, just listed, just sold. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. It was more about making people aware of the community around them and what we're doing and, you know, talking about new businesses, talking about um, new developments that are coming up, talking about, and, and what was most awkward is sitting here talking, yeah. sitting there talking about myself and where I grew up. So you guys may or may not know, but I actually grew up here in Great Falls. So we moved here from Overland Park, Kansas in, 1986 i was a sophomore in high school and finished off my high school years here and um so this is the neighborhood i grew up in you know i think for a lot of people it's uncomfortable to sit there and think i'm going to get on camera and i'm going to talk about myself because you think who am i and why do people like people want to just hear that i sold a billion dollar home or something like that but i had the the most interaction when I would talk about myself because then you understand like you're relatable yeah. and people can, people understand, Oh yeah, I went through that exact same circumstance, you yeah. know? And, and they're, they're online. They're seeing you because they're, they're researching you. They're, they're yeah. deciding which agents do we want to call. And then the beautiful thing about video that I guess intuitively we all should have known, but it's still so cool when you experience it is that you're walking into the living room, you're meeting them for the first time, but they feel like they've already met you. It's like, oh my gosh. And it's and it's you. it's such a simple conversation with them on how did you find me? How did you hear about me? Um, you know, and and then they have already decided like how we are relatable and yeah. they'll just it's it's a very natural conversation from there. That's great. That's yeah. great. So yeah. it's the combination. So the question is like how can you Grow your business 151. How can you be up 151% in a market like this 
or sides are down 30%. And it's really that combination. It's, a, it's investment. It's investing yeah. in your business in the form of marketing. It's investing in your community in the form of, of giving back. And then it's checking in on people during the time when people needed yeah. to, be, yeah. to be checked in on. Um, and they needed toilet paper. Right. And you had right. toilet paper. So it was uh, it, everything then comes together. And it's, it's great. Like what I, I love, first of all, I love that you're having, being successful, but it's also validating for us because, you know, we were as, you know, broker owners of Redwood, what we were preaching is like now is where, right. You're not going to get the sales in, until people figure out if they can leave their house and go out and buy, which it turns out they, they bought in troves. Yeah. Um, but it's now is the most important. It's, it is like, it was like, I remember March, April, May of COVID that when it first started, it was like, now is when like some people are going to show up. Some people are just, you know, going to just wallow into their couch. You know, some people yeah, are yeah. just going to. That's what I call so, the Christmas, like during COVID and even, even after that, like when, when it started becoming a little bit more challenging, um, as far as buyers finding the home for them, um, for themselves with interest rates going up and everything. I think it's what I call, that's when the Christmas help goes home. That's when the seasonal help comes home. They come in because mm -hmm. they think it's easy. They think it's yeah. good. Yeah. They think they know how to write a contract. They mm -hmm. think they know how to negotiate a contract or provide great marketing material or, you know, or, or advise properly. And then, Till they realize that it's actually a job to do, and and there's a yeah. lot of complexities that go in with it. So. Yeah. Well, Christmas time is definitively over. Christmas so. time yeah. is gone. It is, it is gone. gone. It's February. It, the roads are full of ice. It is hailing, and uh, you need to work with 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 the best. Um, wanted to touch real quick on on the value of working with someone on your on your brand to, to, to sort of get your stuff out. Because I know I've had prior to, to working with my team, I've, I've, I would spend hours recording videos that turned out to completely suck. And then I would show up hours later to meet up with my friends. And I'd be like, where were you? You know? And meanwhile, I was just staring into a camera, repeating the same thing. Um, getting demonstrably worse each time. My veins would get huge, you know, my face was just red. Um, and then I wind up going with the first take, yeah. you know, a month yeah. later, I picked the first take and put it out. Yeah. There. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's just great that you, you, you worked with, uh, somebody that's really, really good to help the brand come out. And it feels like your brand is just natural to the point where you, you don't, where what you're doing is just sort of, it's just part of your business. You don't need to be launching a new campaign mm -hmm. here or there. It's just a, yeah. a continuation. So with the Marquee Group, I mean, we started off, um, we developed that group or made that group um, by having a bunch of other small teams come together who were servicing multiple areas. Um, the one thing that I have been true to is that I never want an agent that joins our team to feel like their branding is marquee. The thing that I love about our team is most of our agents are well-experienced, productive agents. What, um, and we come together as almost our own little leadership council to, to educate each other on how we can do it better in different markets. Like Mark and Corey, they are, they work, Bisbo's expires, they, they kill it in that yeah. area. Yeah. Um, for me, I work my sphere, and you know, with other people in in on our team, they are constantly bringing in new ideas on on how they've done something to market themselves that's really worked. And I think you really have to figure out what is more natural to you and what works for you. And I think that's yeah. our team coming together and doing that. It, it makes for a very, very strong team because we also have agents who service so many different areas. So um, like we have people who service Maryland, DC, um, West Virginia, down at Lake Anna, 
you know, we, we have everybody everywhere. So if I needed to, as a, from a referral standpoint, I know that one, they're going to take care of them. Like I would take care of them because we all have very, um, we all run with the same standard of practice on our team. And I think that's huge for a team. Um, if you're going to consider joining them is to make sure that they have a standard of practice that is easy for you to follow, but also allows you to brand yourself, yeah. you know, and I yeah. never wanted to take that away from it. When I first started in real estate, I was part of a team. Nobody knew who I was for my first three years. I did an incredible amount of transactions, but nobody knew Don Tullis. They knew the team the team person that yeah, it was named yeah, after, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And so I, I never developed my own brand until yeah. I was away from that. And I said, when when I have a team, I, I want everybody to be able to brand themselves within the marquee group. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And that so supports the vision that Sean, Nick, and I had when we started Redwood back in 2002, because literally our earliest conversations were, wouldn't it be great if we could be like, this team, but rather than, but when people, when their, their careers develop and they want to go off on their own, rather than leaving the team, what if they could just stay with us? And it feels like you had the same vision and we're, we're able to do it together with Redwood and, and Marquis. Yeah. What was the name of your first team? The Red Polaris Redwood? Group. That's what it is. Yes. I can't, I remember that because you guys were team of the year. Um, I think are in probably 06, 07. Yeah. Yeah, right. we were yeah. team of the year, and then um, we were, when we were marquee, we were the number one team for years. We were number four nationally and number 12 globally. When everybody started, when the market crashed, everybody yeah. was, like, looking for an alternative. Yeah. This, th and and I think it, it goes without saying, anyone following the market, this is very different, right? Oh. 07, 08, 09, were they, that was bad for the homeowners and it was bad for people in the industry, really. The challenges we're having today are limited only to the people in the industry. So the people we're servicing are all, granted, buying homes in with interest rates in the 7% um, isn't fun when you're coming out of a decade of the four, three, four, five percent sometimes even, even twos. Um, but in terms of value, because the supply and demand, there's there's just such a short supply. Realtor.com uh, back in February said 7.2 million home shortage. Before that, we'd always debated, is it a 5 or a 6 million uh, home shortage in the country? Realtor.com now says 7.2 million. So that points very squarely towards there are, um, that the, the prices will continue to, to rise. Um, it's just that, um, for us, helping people navigate this is just sort of trickier than ever. But I also think that, and I think I hear every single real estate agent say, who you hire matters. Yeah. And that is so true. Because most of the houses that I sold weren't, like last year when there was no inventory, weren't on the market. So, so yeah, this yeah. is where being involved in the community yeah being and and not necessarily being out there to make a sale but n understanding like you're getting ready to sell your home in September mm -hmm. great cuz i have you know buyers that might be interested in that and then negotiating you know a deal that is not necessarily you know going in mm -hmm. the mls having to get it staged having to be out of the house for a weekend and things like that but it's being in the community and knowing what's going on and knowing you know what what sellers are out there and, and who might be interested in moving. And just asking the question to a lot of these sellers, like how much would you have to sell your home for in order for you to move? Yeah. And I've yeah. gotten a couple of deals where people are like, let's talk. And sometimes even if somebody is on Zillow, Redfin, you know, all day long, they're still behind the eight ball on, I, I can think of a good friend of mine that, that, he was off by half a million dollars on the value of his home. And he said to me, he says, I, I kind of think I could get this. And I was like, you can do 
far better than that. And then, you know, sold his house. Yeah. 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 So, and I think that a lot of those, I mean, that's when you really have to, you have to understand like Zillow, Realtor.com or Realtor.com. I just caught myself saying that. Oh my gosh. Um, But, you know, they do not take into account homes that were maybe not sold on the MLS. I mean, yeah. you really have yeah. to dig yeah. into public records and, and come up with comps. There have been appraisals that have come in super low and it's, you know, and, you know, I explained to them that, listen, sorry, the listing agent didn't put it together an appraisal package, but here's an appraisal package. And it does show that there are three homes in this community that were sold, um, that were never listed in the MLS because that's just as far as people go, as far as the research goes. A lot of agents, that's just what they do. They're just going to, you know, search the MLS and they don't extend beyond that to give accurate data. Yeah. That's, it all comes down to being local and that's the benefit you get when you work with an agent who's been in the same County for 40 years. So let's, let's talk about Loudoun County. Uh, So when we first started working together, Loudoun County had, I believe five high schools, which was up from one or two. When I first moved here in 98, I believe Loudoun County had three high schools. So five, last count, 18 high schools. That is an insane amount of growth. Considering I grew up in Pittsburgh where they were literally closing schools every single year when I was a kid. So what is it like to like spend your life in such a, in, in a county where everybody's, moving to. Yeah, it's interesting. So I lived in Loudoun County for 40 years. I moved here in high school. So that'll kind of age me a little bit. Um, But it has been, it has been amazing to see it grow. Um, You know, I, I love that it has grown. Um, I think what's really important in what Loudoun County has done well, is that they have put in the infrastructure before they started building these planned communities, mm-hmm. meaning that they they had a plan for how all of Ashburn was primarily going to look, and they put in the roads, and they put in the transit systems, and they put in the the shop. They knew where the shopping areas were going to be, and things like that. Well, before they said, "Let's have a developer now sell to um, these builders and build homes around it," and so I have enjoyed seeing the growth of Loudoun County. Um, I know that one of, I think the smartest things they did, at least out in Western Loudoun, is they put the smart growth in place because we were growing so fast um, that it could have really been, you know, a different situation because you pretty much have, you know, Route 7 that goes out to Western Loudoun and unless they were going to put in a lot of other infrastructure out there. So I do like that you know, as far as Loudoun County goes, you are an hour or two away from lakes, from mountains, from cities, from suburbs. And I think Loudoun County, you have a lot of different people living different lifestyles. And I think it's perfect no matter what lifestyle you want, whether you want to be on 50 acres, whether you want to be, you know, at one Loudoun, you know, living in a four-story townhouse with an elevator and, and wanting that cityscape lifestyle. So I have loved to see the growth. Is there anything you miss about old Loudoun County? Oh, there's always something. There's always something, you know, I like, I went to high school there. I still saw houses in like Sterling and things like that. Um, I lived in Great Falls Forest. So okay. it was, you know, I kind of miss that. I'm, I miss that people were just more of a community, more so than being on a Facebook community or on a social media community. I feel like people define communities different now. Yeah. And so that's what I miss. So Parkview or Broad Run? Parkview. Okay. Okay. So I remember when shortly after I moved to Loudoun County and Sean was like so proud of this, there was a sign and he said, this is when Loudoun County had made it. There was a sign on Algonquian when you were leaving, right right around the border of Fairfax County and Loudoun County, and the sign said Loudoun County Schools. And he was like, for the first time, people were bragging, like you're now entering 
you know, a zone where your kids would go to Loudoun County School. And so he felt like that was like, and this was late 90s, early 2000s when Loudoun got the recognition that he felt like as a Loudoun County kid. Yeah, yeah, that's when you know you made it and when they're, they're like, Loudoun County Schools. So Don, tell me about your favorite buyer story. So it's funny, in 23 years of being in real estate, my favorite buyer story is going on right now. So I have um, clients of mine who have been personal friends with me for probably, I don't know, 20 years. Our kids grew up together. Um, you know, we've just gone through life's ups and downs together. Her and her husband are now buying a house and they wanted to do a custom build. So we were out looking at the land that this custom builder had available to build on their lots. Um, and we found one in Leesburg and it was a, there were two lots and they're tandem. So the front lot was an acre. The back lot was, uh, was a little over two acres. And there was about a $250,000 price difference just because of the amount of land that you got. So they ended up writing a contract on the one acre lot and it had already been parked or had already been certified by the county to be able to be parked. They, um, we wrote the contract. Uh, they went back out there again after it had, had rained for some time to just uh, do a feasibility study, make sure that where they were going to put, you know, the drain field and different things like that, make sure that that was still going to be the proposed area. When they got out there on that one acre lot, they realized that that lot, they weren't going to put any type of drain fields on. Um, they couldn't even extend the, res the reserve drain field onto the other lot. Um, so they came back to us and said, hey, listen, I know you guys want this one acre lot that's like nice and flat. And they said, but we can't build on it. So would you guys mm -hmm. consider moving to the two acre lot? And at that point, time, you know, it put them out at their price point. They were like, no, we really want the one acre lot. You know, um, especially if it's at that price point, we're not going to, we're not going to be able to do it. So then they came back to us and said, um, what if we can do it at the price point? So we kept the same price yeah. point, um, which was 250,000 less and moved to a two acre lot for that same amount. Yeah. Um, so my clients were just ecstatic about it. Now the builder then came back and wanted to try and sell us the one acre lot, even though it wasn't buildable for, um, like a habitable property, you could still use it to put a garage or as long as it wasn't like an actual, um, dwelling, you could put a carport, you could mm -hmm. put a driveway, you could put whatever basketball court, whatever yeah. it is that you wanted on can't it. can't use sewage. You can't like use anything on yeah. it. Right. So they were like, you know, no, we don't want to purchase that property. You know, we're already at our price point here. The builder came back and I said, you know, we don't want the lot. It's not buildable. Um, you know, if you're wanting to gift it to us, then absolutely we'll do it. And never in a million years did I think that, you know, they would do that. Ultimately, we went back and forth with negotiating a little bit. They did try and sell it to us. But at the end of the day, we just signed the contract about a week ago and they're gifting us Sweet. that one acre. So we went from yeah. a one acre lot to now three over three acres yeah. with them being able to build their dream home. So That's I'm awesome. like never in a million years do you come across a builder who's willing to just say, OK, we're going to give you both lots and build the home that you wanted on the smaller lot for the same price. So. That's My great. clients are very, very happy. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So because, cool. And working with friends is, isn't is always easy. So yeah. you tend to internalize issues so much. So Right. And I think they have also, you know, they're a little bit more nervous. They have that higher expectation on making sure that you're doing the due diligence and you're not just being, you know, their friend. So... So they're very appreciative. All right, thank you so much, Don. This has been great. I'm, I I love that everybody got to meet you, uh, and we'll have to do this Perfect. again soon. Awesome, thank you.